Charlie Topak here, back in Bamberger Strassen, Nuremberg, Germany. Once again, on the lookout for some of our senior data scientists to find out about the cool work that they're doing with algorithms and in cohesion with the machine learning engineers. Let's find Barbara and see what she can show us about the work that they're doing. Ah, there she is. Hey, Barbara, how are you? You? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, it's good to see you. I have come to hunt you with a microphone and I hope All that right. you can show me maybe where you guys have been working, maybe in a scrum room or something like that. Sure, we can go to our media measurement scrum room. Perfect, let's do it. What does your, your team work on then? What's the actual product or what are you doing within the product as data scientists? In general, here in the um, Global Data Science Department and also in Media Measurement, we are aiming at developing products. Mm -hmm. So we're not doing kind of ad hoc work, but it's really about finding standardized solutions. Um, and there are yeah, various projects actually where data science is actually needed. So in media measurement, one important part is that um, we have many different data sources, many different measurements. And um, actually we try to leverage the value of those separate assets um, by combining them and making more sense out of them. So um, if you have a measurement which is just for um, usual TV consumption and then you have measurement which just for online is not as um, valuable as having those actually combined. And so that's why you need data science because you have to really understand the data um, and then think about ways how to combine them. Also combine active questionnaires um, and passive measurement together. It sounds like using um, highly varied data assets there and different data sets and, and probably models to analyse them. Mm -hmm. Where do you get all of this data from and why do people trust GFK with it? So we work with third party data but also we have several measurements on our own. Um, so we have online panels, we um, measure linear TV usage, there are actually watches which track the radio consumption, we have apps actually tracking what um, people are doing and how they consume different media. Um, yeah, so it's really a broad variety of different sources. What, what is this room used for? So um, this is our scrum room um, and we use um, the room for all our meetings we have in our scrum team, so all the daily stand-ups, um, also the review session, the sprint planning, um, but also if you need to do some more in-depth discussions, you just know you can come to this room, join up, do brainstorming, we have all these boards everywhere, flip charts, so it's also the room to actually gather ideas, find solutions and work together. Nice. So these, these boards, what, what are they? What are these sheets for? So um, actually this is the result of our PI planning. Um, so around about every three months um, the full media measurement um, department, which I work for, um, actually joins up to discuss what will be developed in the next three months. That's actually the plan. So we have actually several sprints, always two weeks. Of course, as we're working agile, it's not set in stone. It shifts during the PI itself. How do you decide on your priorities? Is that done as an individual? Is it done just by the hiring manager? Is it done in a group discussion? How do you do it? Yeah, with a group of people. So it's not like um, top down, you do this and this. It's a dialogue between the developer team and also um, the management. So everything starts with some ideas, what could we do? And then it's a common discussion. And at the end, um, what the management comes up with is actually a business value or yeah, somehow um, a value to grasp what the value at the end is. And the team comes up with a complexity. So how much effort is it to do it? And then by setting those two values in relation, you can actually come up with a priority. So where do we have the biggest value you compare to the actual complexity it needs to implement. And what's your favourite part of your job? What do you love the most about working here? I mean, I think it's a great environment and a great culture at GFK. Um, and specifically with regards to data science, I always like challenges where it's not very clear from the very right start actually how to solve a specific problem. So, I mean, someone somehow articulates um, actually a goal um, he or she uh, wants to achieve. Um, but then you have to see, well, which data sources can I use? Which models can I apply? Is there anything else available no one has thought about so far? And actually then doing the brainstorming and developing a solution over time 
um, that's something what I think is really fun because it's it's also kind of I think a creative way um, to find solutions which are not obvious from the very start. Sounds like you take a lot of pride in delivering an end-to-end -end solution and really coming up with your kind of own ways of solving these issues. Mm -hmm. um, how, how is it for you if you have a new tool or a new idea you want to try? What, what's the process behind that? I mean, if it's a kind of completely new idea, then um, actually the goal is to find out as quickly as possible if this solution actually works out. So um, we are um, yeah, developing some prototype to check if the idea actually works. And I mean, if it does, then you go on and think about how can you actually productize that. Um, you're setting up systems and of course all the time through the full process you always have to um, communicate closely with the product management so that you make sure that you are aligned and that it's getting into a direction so that a valuable product can actually develop over time. Okay. At the moment, of course, is diversity, diversity in the workplace. We've got conversation around things like gender pay gap. We have conversations around being inclusive of, of all different mm -hmm. types of people, whether it's background, nationality, skill sets, whatever it is. Um, as a female in a heavily male-dominated sector, i.e. tech, tech mm -hmm. and data, how would you say that you've grown since joining GFK? Um, yes, I think it has actually several aspects. Um, so when I started back then, I started more as a statistician. Okay. And so while I was working for GFK, I moved more and more actually into the data science field. I learned a lot of new tools during that, like um, actually using Spark, um, also using um, version control properly, um, using all the different types of collaboration tools. And, uh, now I'm also actually actually going my first steps in Python. Nice. Um, so yeah, it's a constant learning. I think especially in that data science domain, there's so much new that you kind of never stop learning something new. Brilliant. So let's focus on Python as, as a coding language then, as someone who's non-techy. How do you go about even learning how to code? We have opportunities to use different online learning platforms um, for learning a new language. Um, but of course, at the end of the day, you also have to use it. Um, so we also actually foster using those new tools in the projects. Um, and also when, when someone new joins, probably this person brings in new skills. And then it's also about people actually working together um, and showing each other actually how to solve specific things. We have our dailies when someone has a specific problem, like, I don't know how to do this uh, query somewhere, then you raise this question in the daily and then, yeah, in many times actually someone is able to help and that's also how you can learn. Okay. So it's both, yeah, you, you we use actually online platforms or I mean there are a bunch of, of different websites where you see how things can be done and then it's also the exchange in the team. Um, how has your journey been with GFK as a woman? Are you seeing um, more females also wanting to come through the doors and join you or is it very much, you know, you on your own? Mm -hmm. How is it? So I kind of expected that question. Um, <laughs> so... so now we get the perfect answer, right? <laughs> um, I've never um, felt it like something super special. Um, I think always what's valued is what you do. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's also not kind of going that way alone because, I mean, there are so many other colleagues who were always supportive and actually helped me develop myself. And um, so, I've, yeah, I, I think it's, it's in general very open. I don't feel any specific obstacles. Um, and of course, um, I think it, it, it um, should develop in future probably that there are more female people um, also there, um, but I think that yeah, GFK actually offers a great environment for that. And why should people choose GFK? We've gone through kind of a massive transformation um, and now a lot of new things are actually evolving and I always think when new things are created you have also many different options um, what you might do and where you can bring in your expertise and your knowledge. Also, 
Um, I just think that we have a great network in global data science. Um, we have many different sessions for exchange, um, a very open-minded setup, open-minded people to exchange, to learn from each other. Um, yeah, so I think it's fun working here. Well, look, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you, Barbara, and finding out a little bit more about yourself, your team, and, and your journey here. I guess that's all that's left to say is keep up the good work. And until next time, thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. For our latest content, please click here. For our social media channels, here. And please like, comment, and subscribe below. See you in the next video.